people were very helpful with one another. They shared whatever is available. One shrimp would be chopped up in several pieces and distributed among several families just to have a, something that, that can be eaten. I don't recall exactly when we left Assen to go to Meningen, but it happened in the evening. It was my grandfather, uh, Juan Aflapi Santos, my grandmother, Maria Siguenza Santos, and my uncle and Gregorio and, and uh, Jesus, uh, teenagers at the time, and my brother, Eddie Limtialco Santos, and myself. Tata and Granny uh, had a, a caribou cart. And the elderly, the sick, were put in the back of the, the uh, cart. And we left, we walked from uh, Aston to Meningen. What I recall, once we got to Meningen, everybody knew what to do, you know, cut the bamboos and build uh, shelters. It was just a make makeshift, uh, you know, like a thatched roof. Granny had uh, had something to put on the on the uh, floor, whatever the floor was. When, whenever there is an indication that the planes were in the vicinity, uh, I remember that my grandparents uh, would put us all together and they would put their bodies over us to protect us, you know, like Tata and, and Granny and Gregorio and, and, and Jesus. Every morning, my, my task, along with my brother Eddie, was to go to the river, Meningen River, and collect water. We had a bamboo pole about this, this, this tall, and uh, we all lined up, collected water, and we brought it back to the hut where we're, we're at. And the river flows towards the ocean. The women on one side of the river downstream uh, would be washing clothes or, or dishes. On this side would be uh, people uh, bathing, uh, cleaning themselves. And then up, up river, upstream, we all line up, single file. And, and only one person would go up to the stream to collect the water. And that single file was, uh, you know, uh, uh, very important so that when you fill your bamboo pole with water, it's clean as much as possible. I found this to be very uh, remarkable about the discipline. No one was enforcing it, but we were enforcing it ourselves. We were not allowed to uh, have any fire except once a day. Uh, when the fire starts, the instruction was there's no smoke will be visible from the air. At an appropriate time, about mid-afternoon, mid, uh, uh, the fire will be lit and Granny would put this big pot and then our job is to put the water uh, on the pot. And then Eddie and I would be doing this to ensure that the flame doesn't go up. And everything that's edible is put in this pot. And what I remember is that nothing goes to waste. Nothing. Nothing at all. And then when it's ready to put out the fire, they'll separate the, the wood and then put some dirt. And then when it's ready to put, to put it out, they'll put water. And then our job is to fan it so that the 
the flame doesn't go up. What I remember also, uh, when I was in Meningen, whenever it's dark, it's dark. Whatever light we have, it's natural light. If you hear anything, it'll be the prayers. Because everybody was praying just about every day. My grandparents, especially my grandmother Maria, was always saying the rosary. And if we have to sing, we, it'll be very low, you know, like humming because they don't want to hear voices. And of course, we just, we just pray, we just pray. And one particular evening, uh, she was crying and saying the rosary and, and, and asking my uncle Gregorio Siguenza to stand there so that she can look at him and put that imprint of his feature into, his, into her brain. She probably had an idea that something was going to happen to Gregorio. And then Gregorio left the following morning, early in the morning. I remember waking up to say goodbye to him. And, uh, you know, Gregorio with others, they just marched in, uh, with the Japanese uh, up north. Uh, Gregorio never returned. And of course, we had no idea where he was. In 2018, I attended one of the uh, memorial in Saguan. I noticed that Gregorio's name was, is not listed as one of the 45. So I wrote my auntie, uh, Dolores, to have her uh, submit a, a statement and, and have it notarized that her brother Gregorio was, was 17 years old when, when he left Meningun to help the Japanese uh, north. Their names are listed in addition to the 45 now. So it, the memorial is, it means a lot to me now because the glorious name is listed there. What I recall as a child in Meningen was the sharing of anything that's edible. The emphasis was to take care of the elderly, the sick, and the children. And I, I found it to be a lesson that will sustain me for the rest of my life. I, I learned about love. I learned about the purpose in life, uh, to lean on God and God alone, to constantly pray for God's intervention. And I learned about forgiveness. I, I learned to forgive the Japanese in spite of the atrocity that they imposed on some of the Chamorros, just like us. Not all of us are, are good, some of us are bad. So you find that in all, all, all races. Uh, but for the most part, I, I, you know, I learned to, to love and to forgive, and I, I lean on prayers. 